I'm going to show you how to make a killing investing in real estate, and you're only going to need to tie up 10 grand. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Today's show, today's show is from a man, Abe. Abe, you're an investor in PA, brother, and I'm going to show you how to do a hell of a deal, a killer deal. You're going to make a lot of money on this deal if things go right and you only got to tie up 10 grand, right? See, here's the thing, though, right? That's the thing, brother. If things go right, right? I'll be frank with you, bro, because that's what I do, right? That's why people, that's why people work with me as their broker, and not because I'm like the most friendly, polite person there is, not because. Like, anytime you tell me something, I'll give you the warm and fuzzies and make you feel good about your idea. No, 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 no. If you're that kind of person that wants that type of positive reinforcement at all times, I'm not your guy. Because if you come to me with something and I think it's dumb, I'm going to be the first. I'd be like, dude, that's dumb. Don't do that. That doesn't make any sense, right? So I tell it to you like it is. That's what I do, right? And with you, Abe, I'm not saying you have a dumb idea because you don't. No, no, no. But you have an idea of what you want to do, an expectation of what you want to do in this market, where is it possible? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. But, dude, I, you know, I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you what you want to do is kind of a stretch, right? You're, you're really trying to do these bird deals where you have so little money into the deal and you're making so much. Like, is it possible to, to, to do one of those, to close one of the deals that hit the goals that you've presented to me? Yes. But it's not going to happen every time. And to actually make something like that happen, that's probably going to be a scenario where we're going to need to shoot off a ton of low ball offers. Okay? So, what I've got for you now is a property that's listed at 70. We're going to need to pick it up for half of that to come close to the types of returns you want. Because I'm going to tell you this, brother, there ain't just going to be this shelf where there's all these properties that are making the kind of returns that you've asked me to present to you, and you just, like, pluck them off. No. Can I deliver it to you? Yeah. But I would suggest you stock up on a lot of these videos, bro, because we're going to need to do our due diligence and be slingshotting off a large amount of offers, right? We're probably going to need to shoot off 20 or 30 of these kind of offers with the expectation of securing you one or two killer deals like this where you're only leaving 10 Gs into it and you're making a return as high as this. So uh, let's take a quick break and then we'll dive into the numbers on how that deal would actually work out. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's break out the numbers, okay? This property right here could work as a great bird deal, okay? This could be an amazing bird deal. By the way, for anybody who's watching this who doesn't understand what that means, bird, it's an acronym. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance repeat okay you need to buy a jacked up house in this house folks this is a jacked up house it definitely fits the bill of jacked up houses there is a tree that has fallen over this kitchen has been destroyed like it's just horrible completely needs renovation bathroom is just jacked i mean you know any and everything right it's all types of effed up right this uh little garage got to tear this sucker down by the way uh, it's only going to cost about two grand to tear it down. I know sometimes investors see things like this and they think we need to like fix it. No, 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 no. we ain't going to fix it. This is like 100 years old, just a little lean-to structure. You just tear it down, two grand. It's okay. Your tenants are still going to rent the duplex. There's actually a ton of properties in the Cleveland market in these CD-type neighborhoods, right? 
uh, where the garages are torn down. It does not affect the rentability. I'm going to give you the rental rates here shortly, uh, so don't freak out about that. Now, one thing to know, though, right? This is the type of due diligence that you're going to get uh, working with me here on Holton Wise TV, folks. Uh, there, there's in the Cleveland market. It's not just Cleveland, right? There's like all kinds of municipalities, right? And I have all of them listed on the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods, right? You can link that in the show notes below, or if you go to uh, the Tools and Resource tab on HoltonWise.com, I got it there, right? I graded all the municipalities A to F. F, okay? Super low prices, super high risk. A, super high prices, super low risk, okay? Various real estate strategies will work in various types of assets, right? I can break all that down. For example, I have made the most money on long-term rentals in C and D neighborhoods like this one. For example, I think short-term rentals make sense in A neighborhoods. I would never, ever, under any circumstances, do a short-term rental on a property like this, Okay, that, in my opinion, would be batshit fucking crazy. Okay, likewise, I would not try to put a Section 8 tenant in to an A grade property, right? That's not like it just doesn't make sense, right? We, every property can make you money if you buy it right and you utilize the right strategy, right? So that's what I'm all about, right? I'm piecing you guys with the right strategies, giving you the background info, okay? So with that said, in that ultimate guide outside of the grading, it'll just show you how many different cities we're actually working with, okay? And some of them would require you to replace the garage if you tore it down. Cleveland itself, the actual city of Cleveland, not one of them, though, right? So check that out. They all also have different tax rates. So you get a slew of information there, the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, all right? But cruising through this, just more, just totally jacked up, right? The whole thing, it's a whole friggin' nightmare, right? It's, it, it's all screwed up, right? This thing's going to need a whole bunch of reno, okay? So what do we got going on? First, let me give you the address. I don't even think I gave it to you yet. 3244 West 41st, Cleveland, 44109. And they got a price that's 70K. It's been on the market for 70 days because that price is insane. That price is $35,000 too much. If you bought this for 70, you just flushed $35,000 down the toilet. Now, I know some people might see this like, oh, a duplex for 70K, that must be a good deal. No, because this thing is going to require approximately 50 grand to put it back together, right? So, we, the most we'd want to pay for this is 35, okay? If we could pick this up at half price, $35,000. It, we'd probably have to put every bit of $50,000 into this, right? We'd have an all-in investment of eighty-five k. If we get that, this would be a hell of a deal, right? Because one unit is 3-1, the other is 2-1. So we're going to be bringing in fifteen fifty in rent or 18600 right? But you don't get to keep all that, folks. Fixed and variable expense estimates. Once you run through those... Your clear profit would be 8051 and this is where the Burr strategy gets good, right? You buy a super jacked up property like this that needs friggin' $50,000 of work, and you create equity. You create value, right? We're all in for eighty five at that point with two Section 8 tenants, and they're paying what they're paying, fifteen fifty in total per month. We would be looking at a property that is worth a hundred grand. You get the bank to refi it at a hundred grand. They're giving you back seventy five. You only put eighty five into the deal, meaning you only hold ten grand into the deal, and that would make your projected cash on cash return forty three percent. Right. So this thing could be a killer deal, but you can't pay seventy grand for it. Right. So. Does it have the potential to be a good bird deal? Absolutely, right? But you got to get that discount because if you pay what the seller is asking you to pay, you're going to lose $35,000. If we can get it at the right price, and then my team will handle that big old $50,000 renovation. And what would that entail if you're curious, right? Now, obviously, I'm kind of ballparking it a little bit, but... Folks, I've sold over $200 million worth of this stuff. I run the largest scattered site portfolio in the whole friggin' market, okay? I've got property upon property upon property upon property just like this, right? We're going to go in. We're going to redo both units, floor to ceiling, right? Refinish the hardwoods, patch the holes, paint the walls gray, white trim, all right? We're going to have vinyl allure in the kitchen and the bath, okay? Everything else will be the hardwoods, all right? 
We're going to put new Home Depot Lowe's quality fixtures in the kitchen and the baths, right? Little one-piece showers. Probably going to redo all the windows. Probably going to need some exterior work. I left a little buffer space in there in case we need to do a roof. Looked like there was some potential roof issues, right? So all told, it should shake out to around 50 grand, right? That's as close as I could narrow it down right now in this video. Now, after we get a general home inspection, assuming we get the seller to take our offer of $35,000, I'll know even more and I could narrow that down even more, right? What that uh, $50,000 would not fix would be a major structural issue, right? That's like the main thing we're looking for. So if we, uh, through a home inspection, determined that there was like a major structural issue in the basement, we would need to further reduce that price or we would need to walk away from the deal, right? So this one could be an amazing deal if we get a lot of things to fall into play. Uh, it could also be a dud, but hey, guess what? If you're trying to invest in real estate, you're trying to get deals where you can make a 43% return, you got to do the work, right? It's not like you just walk up to the shelf and it's like, oh, property with all kinds of equity? Oh, let me grab that. No, 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 no. We got to work as investors to put amazing deals like this together, right? That's why you guys do the MLS search and analysis show, because if you're going to become an investor like this, you need to understand this is a numbers game. It's like fishing. You got to put multiple rods in the water. We got to do due diligence on a ton of properties, shoot off a bunch of offers to get the good deals, right? Because if you don't want to do that, you could just buy whatever the sellers are selling you. That's fine. You could just buy this at 70, but you're going to lose 35 grand, right? To actually get the deal for the right price that makes sense for you, we're going to have to do a lot of work because I can't guarantee you that the seller is going to take 35 grand. Maybe the seller gets lucky and he finds some sucker who doesn't watch my show who gives him 70 grand. I think that's pretty unlikely, uh, but it's possible, right? So is this deal a home run guaranteed to get done? No, but I guarantee you if you bought the deal at the list price, you would lose money, and I don't want to see you do that, right? So that's why you work with me. I break it down. I could present the seller the $35,000 offer on your behalf and do my very best to sell it, and guess what? They take it. Boom, we do the deal. If they don't take it, that's okay. We move on to the next one and the next one and the next one, and you know what usually happens with sellers like this, that they have their properties way overpriced? Maybe at 70 days on the market, they tell us no. But you know what? Maybe at 140 days, they email us again. They're like, hey, is that offer still good, right? A lot of these come back, okay? I made a lot of money in my career. Shooting off offers, seller tries to counter. I say, nope, that's my highest and best. And guess what? Six months down the road, two months down the road, four months down the road, whatever it is, they come back like, hey, man, is that cash offer still good? And then I get the deal I really wanted. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.